So, why should we hire you? There's no fancy introduction to this question, because honestly, it doesn't need an introduction. I think we all know. This is the question in an interview. Think about it. All of the other questions in an interview are there for very specific, targeted reasons. How will this person manage their time? Are they a flight risk? Will they fit in well with the team? But the purpose of this question is the same as the overall purpose of the interview. Should we hire you? This means if you answer this question well, the rest of the interview is just bonus. Or I guess an opportunity to screw everything up. But <laughs> let's stay positive here. Now, don't get me wrong. Every question is an opportunity to impress the interviewer and sell yourself. But this is the sell yourself question. You don't have to twist a story of failure into something that makes you look good or be bound by the limitations of a weirdly worded question. This is your open-ended, free shot to tell them why you are the best candidate and why they would be crazy not to hire you. This is your hard sell. But that means unlike most interview questions, there isn't just one thing you need to get across. You're selling the whole package. So I like to break this response down into three different things about you that you're going to share with the interviewer to express why you are the best candidate for this job. And those three components are going to be your qualifications, your past accomplishments, and your Eunice. By hitting on all three of these things, we're going to show them that we're the complete package and that we're the candidate who will provide the most value. The first of these things that we'll want to be sure to get across in our response is our qualifications. This usually includes highlighting our skills and talents that we're proficient in and that we know will allow us to be able to do the job that we're applying to. If you have any doubts on how to do this one, you can honestly just walk through the job listing and pick out the most relevant requirements that you can speak to. The purpose here is really to convince the interviewer that we can do the job that we're applying to. If they leave this interview questioning that fact, then we've failed this interview. But just saying I'm qualified doesn't really do it here. Highlighting our qualifications simply gives us a starting point. What we really want to do is show them that we're qualified. And the best way to do this is by sharing our past experiences. This can be awards, projects, professional or personal accomplishments. Anything that is going to show the interviewer that you've been here before, that you've had comparable tasks and have achieved them. This isn't simply a bragging session though. You're not here just to impress them as a person. You're using your experiences to solidify the fact that you are competent and that they wouldn't regret hiring you for this job. A few good questions that you can try to answer with your experiences here are, how have your previous jobs prepared you for this job? What are some of your achievements that show you have already done something similar? What about your work experience is unique to you? What about your personal experiences makes you stand out over other candidates? But what if you're not qualified? Well, you can still answer this question pretty effectively. Just know you're a tiny bit handicapped. Now, I'll be the first to admit, I apply to jobs that I'm not qualified for. All the time, in fact. And by qualified, I mean I don't meet every requirement on the job listing. And I'll actually be releasing a video about this next week. But the reason I apply to jobs like this is because I am confident that given the opportunity, I can, in fact, do the job. And I use this question to convince the interviewers of that. Just because you don't check some of the boxes doesn't mean you can't do the job. I think we all know that. It just means you need to convince them that you can do that despite not having some of those official requirements. The most powerful way to do this though is still to utilize a combination of your skills and your past experiences. In this situation, it's helpful to share some of your past experiences where you were able to quickly pick up new skills like you're gonna have to do if you get this new job. Now, before I get to the third pillar of the response, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my channel if you find this type of content valuable. Liking this video and leaving a comment is the best way to show me what you really think about this video. And subscribing is the best way for you to see my new videos when they come out. All right, back to the interview response. At this point, we've showed that we can do the job. 
We've done that by sharing our skills, our qualifications, by sharing our accomplishments. Once we've cleared that minimum bar, we're going to sprinkle on why we're better than all of the other candidates applying for this job position. And we're going to do that by sharing with the interviewer your Unis. Your Unis in this context is the value that you'll be adding to this team, above and beyond just doing your job. Doing your job is expected of you, but the additional value that you can provide, whether that's through maximizing your sales or simply being a supportive coworker, any extra value is the thing that's going to push you over the top when comparing you to the other candidates. I tend to break this up into two categories, direct value and indirect value. Direct value simply means you did something awesome above and beyond your basic job requirements. And that led directly to measurable results. An example of this in your response could look something like, I was just able to save my company $50,000 in labor costs by automating our systems. Or I earned the company an additional $100,000 in sales, which led me to receiving awards three months in a row. Anything like this where you can prove that your actions provided a direct value to the company in some form. But being able to quantify this with metrics and stats is going to win you a gold star here too. But this doesn't need to be just dollar values, although they, they do love dollar values. But whatever metric this team judges their success by, show that you can do it. Or more importantly, show that you've done something similar in the past. Indirect value, on the other hand, can be a bit more subtle and difficult to describe, much less quantify. Here, we're going to show that we're not only high performers, but can contribute to a positive work environment. At this point, you've probably sold your ability to do the job. Now, you want them to like you, or at least want you as a coworker. Here's the thing I want you to remember about this part of the response. And actually, this applies to the entire interview. But if you can show the hiring manager that you being on the team is going to make their life easier and make him or her look good, then you have a huge advantage over those who haven't made this sell. But this part of the response doesn't have to be just about making the hiring manager's life easier. It can be simply that you're funny or that you bring in cookies every day to help with team bonding. Really, anything that you personally bring to this team that will allow the team's performance overall to be better and honestly make the hiring manager like you enough that they just want you on their team, even if you're not as qualified as some of the other candidates. Job interviews aren't easy, especially when you need to translate the question that they ask into the question that they really want to know. But the interview question, why should we hire you, is as straightforward as they come. Answer this question well, and you'll be at the top of the list to land your next job.